Following on from the complete history of Stepney, which should be watched after this for a more general history of Stroudley's famous terriers, I had aimed to make one about Fenchurch. However, in true Fenchurch tradition at this point, here it is a little late. Just in time to celebrate its 151st birthday. We've talked too about the first Brighton A-Class tank to be built, but Fenchurch was the first to enter service. The London, Brighton and South Coast Railway had only expected it to last 30 years, but Fenchurch went on to become the last terrier in service, the oldest engine working for British Railways. If it weren't for a few forward-thinking minds, it may not have had such a guaranteed future. When the LBSCR needed a fast and lightweight engine to deal with the commuter lines of South London, William Stroudley's answer was the A-Class, which very quickly adopted the nickname Terriers. Poplar and Wapping were destined to be the first to fly the nest, but cylinder cracks were found before number 71 left Brighton Works, and it was instead given number 70's cylinder block. Meanwhile, on the 7th of September 1872, number 72 was quietly finished and entered service first. Fenchurch became a testbed for a new railway invention from America, continuous brakes. Quite important. Originally, with just a sharp steam brake on the loco, the fireman and guard would have to rely on the handbrakes alone to control jam-packed passenger trains. Harper's hydraulic brakes were declined in favour of the George Westinghouse air brake, which gave the terriers their characteristic panting sound. In Southern Railway days, it was also given vacuum brakes. So if you're looking to cast Fenchurch in your remake of Unstoppable, you'll have to stop dreaming. Fenchurch was also the strongest of the class, as in 1904, it was fitted with 14-inch cylinders, compared to the rest who were envious with their 13-inch cylinders. But that was all after the LBSCR felt that at age 26, it was getting too old to be useful. Sorry if that makes you feel old. After being so successful at their job that it had become too much for them to handle, Several terriers were retired and sold to smaller companies. And Church was the first to go, being bought in 1898 by the New Haven Harbour Company, but keeping its original name and Stroudley colours. The Harbour Railway were so closely tied to the Brighton that it was more like a parent company, and for good reason. New Haven was the LBSCR's own attempt at a cross-channel ferry port, complete with their own ships to Dieppe in France and a tramway network to serve them. For reasons I don't understand, this stretched past the fort and all the way out to the lighthouse on the breakwater. How many deliveries did the lighthouse keep a neat? Like Langston Harbour on Hailing Island, the swing bridge at New Haven was only suitable for small tank engines. So Little Fenchurch claimed this as its home for the next 60 years. Even though it was repainted black in 1910 and rebuilt three years later to A1X form, it kept its name until 1917 when it finally gained the company's name on the tanks. However, so fond were the locals at this point that it was always known as Fenchurch. To the extent that a sign across the bridge stated that only Fenchurch and other terriers were permitted to cross. Aww. A typical day at the harbour would mean a morning of picking up trucks from the two stations and trundling along the road with Mr Avis the flagman in front. 
dropping off goods along the quay at the various sidings, picking up empties, and being back on shed by early afternoon. What nice working hours. However, of course, during World War II, the harbour was put under new strains. Other terriers came to help as 19,500 special munitions trains arrived during the war years and the whole area was a prime target. Before all that though, the newly formed Southern took ownership of the Harbour Railway and Fenchurch once again belonged to the Big Railway. Wearing goods black, instead of retaking its number 672, it was given Bramley's old number of B636 the following year, becoming 2636 in 1929. Any major repairs were done at its birthplace in Brighton, where in 1935 they found old LBSCR gilt number templates and gifted them to Fenchurch. The BBC were hosting a radio programme at New Haven in British Railways days and they made a special mention for the Stroudley Celebrity, now the oldest engine working on the network. The railway network, not the BBC. For the first time in half a century, BR let the engine run passenger trains at Eastbourne in 1952, and from then it was chosen for many specials and rail tours. In 1955, it went to help with the goods traffic on the Kent and East Sussex Railway at St. Leonard's, where it worked alongside future shed mate, number 55, Stepney. Both lines were soon to close, but not before Fenchurch gave preservationists a bit of a scare. In 1962, Fenchurch and a diesel had a standoff at New Haven during a shunting incident. Fenchurch's bunker was bent out of shape and the rear drawbar punctured through into the firebox. In a time when BR was looking for any excuse to scrap their ancient steam locos, this should have been the death toll like it had been for Wanush in a similar accident before. However, the crews had grown so fond of their little harbour engine that they worked with the teams at Eastleigh to rebuild the firebox to give it any chance of being preserved. Another close call was yet to happen. From July to November 1963, Fenchurch joined the rest of its remaining siblings on the Hailing Island branch, working the final train there and so becoming the first and last terrier in service at a decent 91 years of age. <laughs> Having already rescued Stepney, the Bluebell Railway had made requests to BR to save Fenchurch too. Not Fenchurch too, the original Fenchurch. But it became available at the worst possible time. Officials had told the preservation group that they couldn't continue renting the line and would have to meet their purchase price or be closed for good. With funds being raised for that, there was very little left to save for buying more engines, but Fenchurch was an opportunity that couldn't be missed. After disappointing results, seeing if businesses in the real Fenchurch Street of London would possibly sponsor the engine, help came from a most unlikely figure. Dr Beeching, seen by many as the figure that led the demise of steam in Britain, and many railway lines along with it, such as the Bluebell, lived nearby in East Grinstead. BR had given four weeks for the volunteers to save Fenchurch. But as a local resident, Beeching empathised and put in a good word for them to be given six months to raise the money instead. Having trundled 1.1 million miles throughout its life, Fenchurch and an ex-LBCR milk van became the last arrivals by rail to the Bluebell Railway on the 13th of May 1964, as the branch line from Haywards Heath to Horsted Keynes was lifted soon after. 
With New Haven Harbour Company on one side, and Fenchurch on the other, it steamed until 1970, when it was overhauled ahead of its 100th birthday. It missed its centenary by a few months, but was back in time to be invited to the 150th anniversary of the Stockton and Darlington Railway in Shildon, 1975. As one of the few engines giving demonstration rides and picked out with its whitewashed coal, Fenchurch became an event favourite. It had even travelled once more on the national network to make the last few miles there, but when it got home, a new firebox was needed. Once this was built, Fenchurch fired on until 1988, when this time a wheel was found to be cracked, and it didn't seem likely that the engine would turn a wheel again for many years. If it weren't for the small loco group, that may have been the case. Young members like Matthew Wood, who tragically passed away before he got to see Fenchurch steam once more, voluntarily set out to raise funds and restore smaller engines of the Bluebell's fleet. The Fenchurch Fund was set up in his memory, which saw not only new wheels made, but a new smoke box and sandboxes too, to make the engine appear in its original A1 condition. Unlike Box Hill, Fenchurch is still an A1X in performance, and actually performs, now with as-built 13-inch cylinders to match. When the Reverend W. Audrey visited the Bluebell and wrote Stepney the Bluebell Engine into the railway series, Fenchurch hadn't arrived yet, so he never shared the stardom of becoming a Thomas character. However, the engine did have several cameo roles in other productions, such as the 1975 film Liz to Mania, where it smashes into a grand piano on the tracks. When they say, if you see something that doesn't look right, this must surely count. In 2001, it returned in Marsh Umber with the number 672, which it never carried in its career because it was already at New Haven, but it's a nice what if. In 2022, it was restored for its 150th birthday, which, like its 100th birthday, it missed by a few months. I was honoured to have been asked by the railway to make a little animation for the occasion, and the workshop staff recreated it by giving Fenchurch some balloons to celebrate. Aww. Whilst it appears in a more authentic livery, its original Stroudly improved engine green, Bluebell volunteers have still had a bit of fun customising the engine. On one side, it's been given the shed allocation for New Cross Gate, where it first worked, but on the other, it's been given its new home of Sheffield Park, not South Park. Similarly to how Stepney first arrived in 1960, the number has been painted on the bunker, and just for an extra bit of fun, it now has a chime whistle. engine that was only expected to last 30 years, at 151 and looking this good, it's doing okay for itself. Especially considering the last minute panic before it was saved from scrap. Capturing the public's attention since it was first built, in that regard, little has changed and it still remains a much loved and very capable engine. especially when it comes to efficient fuel consumption. 
something that's making the Terriers very sought after little engines once again in the modern day. I hope that after the wait you've enjoyed learning about Terrier 72 Fenchurch. In time no doubt I'll look into the histories of the other preserved Terriers and beyond. And if you'd like to help support the cost of these videos, then consider pledging as a patron in the description and you'll be the first to see my upcoming videos. There's also a playlist full of all of the guide rails we've done to date, so check that out as well. Big thank you to all of my brilliant patrons Alex Goodman, GBH Train, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Nat, Random Thomas Fan, Peter Davenport, Ego, Kildane's Coven, Insane Edward, Dark White 73, Not Duke, The Sudrian Git, and Andrew Diak.